we'll get started. All right, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Amy Qualitine, Outreach Manager at the National Women's Law Center, and I want to thank all of you for joining us today. Before we get started, I want to make sure that everyone can hear us clearly. You can choose to listen to the webinar through your computer speakers, or you can select telephone on the control panel on the right-hand side of your screen and use your phone to dial in with the phone number that appears there. We will be taking questions after our featured experts finish their portions of the presentation, but we encourage you to submit questions throughout the webinar as they come up. You can submit a question by typing it in the designated area on your control panel and hitting send. Unfortunately, we will not be able to answer every single question in the time we have today, but we'll do our very best to answer as many as we can. Please note that this webinar is being recorded, and you'll receive a link to both the recording of the presentation and a link to the PowerPoint slides within the next few days. So today's presentation will feature a number of expert speakers, starting with Virginia Reno, who is Vice President for Income Security at the National Academy of Social Insurance, where she is known for her expertise on social security, retirement policy, income of the elderly, and disability policy. So Virginia. Take it away. Thank you, Amy. Um, and thank you all for being here. Welcome on behalf of the National Account uh, Academy of Social Insurance. Um, I would also like to mention our partners who are joining us in this webinar. Uh, Joan Entmacher from the National Women's Law Center, where she is Vice President for Family Economic Security. Leticia Miranda from the National Council of La Raza, where she is P Senior Policy Advisor on Economic Security Policy, and Kyle Williams with the National Urban League, where he's Legislative Director on Housing and Finance Policy. We also uh, appreciate support for the work we're doing today from the Alfred P. Sloan Foundation and the Retirement Research Foundation. Our goal in this seminar is to help uh, with this entire project is to help workers find out about the financial advantages of delaying Social Security when they can. Our target audience is middle and lower income uh, workers approaching retirement, people in their 50s and early 60s. We also want to reach people that workers trust for advice about retirement. That includes families, friends, co-workers, community groups, and professional advisors. So when can we take Social Security. If you claim it as early as age 62, um, that's your first opportunity, but your monthly benefit will be reduced. Benefits are higher if you wait until later. To calculate your retirement benefit, the Social Security Administration uses something called your full retirement age. It's based on the year you're born. It is 66 for people uh, approaching retirement uh, now who are between 56 and 71 years old. That full retirement age will gradually rise to 67 for people who are now 55 years of age and, young, and younger. Uh, they were born in 1960. So how does work affect your benefits? Uh, there are many answers to this question, and I'll make just three quick points here. First, if you are younger than your full retirement age and you earn over a certain limit, and that limit is about $15,500 a year now, Social Security will withhold some of your benefits. It withholds $1 for each $2 of your earnings over that uh, exempt amount, that $15,000 amount. That's if you're uh, working before your full retirement age. After your full retirement age, Social Security does not withhold benefits because you work. You can delay taking Social Security uh, by, by not claiming uh, at your full retirement age or asking Social Security to suspend your benefit. That means you will get a higher benefit if you wait. We'll say more about that with the next slide. So how much higher are benefits if you wait? 
Well, uh, using an example, if your full retirement age is 66 and you've earned a benefit of $1,000 a month based on your work history, if you take your benefit as early as 62, that benefit would be reduced down to $750 a month for the rest of your life. That's a 25% reduction. It's a little higher if you wait till 63 and then 64 and 65 and so on. If you delay beyond your full retirement age, the benefit is increased for each year you delay. It's 8% per year, so if you wait all four years until age 70, it's 32% higher than you would have had at your full retirement age. We recognize that not everyone can wait, but if you need uh, and if people need Social Security to make ends meet, they should take it. It's there to provide economic security. But if you can wait, even a year or two, it means higher benefits for life. So people may ask, why forego Social Security now to get more later? Well, there are a couple reasons to think about with regard to that question. First, the longer you live, the more important Social Security is likely to be. And that's two important features about Social Security that make it different from most other retirement income sources. First, it's guaranteed to last as long as you live. Um, that may be true of other pensions, but it's not true of earnings from work or necessarily from savings in savings accounts. And secondly, Social Security automatically keeps up with inflation. Uh, many, most other pensions do not, and uh, inflation protection can be very important over the long term. Data show that, uh, in fact, Social Security is more important for uh, today's seniors the older they get. Uh, those receiving Social Security now, uh, among those in their late 60s, 65 to 69, about half, two out of three seniors, get most of their income from Social Security. But among those 80 and older, fully three out of four get most of their income from Social Security. So forgoing benefits to a later age means having a higher benefit uh, when it's likely to be a larger portion of your total income. So what are the prospects of living until 80? Using life expectancy data from the Office of the Actuary of the Social Security Administration, we find that most 65-year-olds today are expected to live beyond 80. Uh, at, uh, at 65, the average woman can expect to reach age 86, and men can expect to reach 84. So that's a high probability. It's also important if you are married to think about the uh, consequences of claiming for your spouse. Couples have two, plan uh, two lives to plan for in retirement. Of couples age 65 today, more than half will have one spouse live beyond age 90, according to the actuaries of the Social Security Administration. Now the important point here is if you are the higher earner in a couple, your decision to delay Social Security benefits means a higher benefit for you for the rest of your life. It also means a higher benefit for your spouse uh, if she should outlive you in old age. So many people ask, is there a risk in waiting to claim Social Security? Will it still be there? Well, the answer is yes, it will be there if you wait. In fact, Social Security is much stronger than many people realize. It is true that Congress has not yet scheduled enough funds to pay all future benefits, but it has done most of the job. Social Security is fully financed for the next 15 to 20 years, and it is about three-fourths of the way to full financing after that. Lawmakers have many good options to fill that shortfall. And finally, it's reassuring to know that Americans say they value Social Security, they want to preserve it, and they agree they will pay more if that is what is needed to keep it strong. So how much do workers and employers now pay for Social Security? Uh, today, workers and employers each pay 6.2% of workers' earnings, and they pay up to a cap, and that cap is now $117,000 a year. About 5% of all workers 
uh, earn enough that they uh, make more than that cap. Uh, in their cases, they stop paying into Social Security when they reach the cap, and their employer stops also paying on their behalf when they reach the cap. Now, uh, we've done research asking Americans how they feel about various options to uh, keep Social Security strong for the long term. The, uh, this, this recent survey asked uh, the specific question of whether people agree or disagree that what it's critical to preserve Social Security for future generations, even if that means increasing working Americans', Americans contributions to Social Security. Uh, the large majority of Americans agreed. That was 82 percent. And the, the agreement uh, with this statement was true across generations, young and old, high and low income groups, and among people of different uh, political parties, Republicans, Democrats, and Independents. The same survey also found widespread agreement on ways to fix Social Security's funding gap. The uh, two most popular options for fixing that funding gap would first gradually rate, phase out the cap so that higher earners and their employers would pay in throughout the year, uh, throughout the whole year, as other workers and employers do but it would be phased in gradually. Second, uh, also phasing in gradually a, an increase in the tax rate that workers and employers each pay from 6.2 to 7.2. That would phase in very slowly over 20 years. These two options uh, came out among the most favored in the recent survey that we did. They would close the uh, full funding shortfall and, in fact, would uh, have some funds left over uh, for a safety, uh, a safety net or to provide uh, benefit improvements. Obviously, there are many other options available. Policymakers could gra also decide to gradually lower benefits, uh, or they may choose to increase revenues to Social Security in other ways. So finally, uh, key messages about when should I take Social Security, how to think about it, if you need it early, by all means, take it. You've earned it, and that's what it's there for. But if you can wait, it will be higher for the rest of your life. If you earn more than your spouse, delaying Social Security means a higher survivor benefit for your spouse if she or he lives longer than you do. And finally, Social Security will be there if you wait. That concludes my remarks. I would like to also point you to uh, some additional resources that are available on our website that you can get to uh, with these, these, this information. And now I'll turn it over to Joan Entmacher from the National Women's Law Center. Thank you, Gina. Um, I'll start off by saying that everything Virginia said about the importance of Social Security and the need to think about lifetime income is especially true for women, and as we'll hear later, also uh, true for Latinos and African Americans. Next slide. Nearly four in ten women, um, as Virginia said, will live past 90. And this isn't just about white women. Women of uh, color, including African American women, Latinas, and Asian women, all have longer average life expectancies than white men. And as she said, Social Security is even more important as you age. Uh, by the time women reach 80 and older, 4 in 10 rely almost entirely on income from Social Security. So women need to make the most of Social Security, which includes understanding the benefits that are available to spouses, surviving spouses, and divorced spouses. Today, I'll just be talking about Social Security's retirement benefits for spouses. I just want to note that Social Security isn't only a retirement plan. It also offers life and disability insurance protections for young families, including spouses and children, in case a worker becomes disabled or, um, is, uh, or there's an early death and, and Social Security protects the families. But getting back to the retirement benefits, what's available? As a spouse, you can get up to 50% of your spouse's benefit, assuming he or she uh, has earned uh, Social Security benefits, or your own worker benefit, whichever is higher. As a surviving spouse, you can get up to 100% of your deceased spouse's benefit or your own worker benefit, whichever is higher. 
And finally, if you are divorced um, and you were married uh, for at least 10 years, you can get the same benefits as a current spouse or widow. Now, um, these benefits are available on the same basis to uh, husbands as wives, to widowers as widows. But because uh, they are available, uh, uh, you get the higher of your own benefit or the spouse benefit or widower benefit, and men generally have higher benefits. Um, it is overwhelmingly women who rely on these benefits for spouses, although legally uh, they're available to, to both. Back to the next slide. Um, I use the term husband and wife just to make the point that they are gender neutral. Uh, but what about same-sex couples? Well, uh, we now, um, since the uh, Supreme Court ruled that the Defense of Marriage Act was unconstitutional, uh, some same-sex couples can clearly get uh, spousal benefits on the same basis as other couples. Uh, those are couples that were married in a state that recognizes same-sex marriage and live in a state that recognizes same-sex marriage when they apply for benefits. There are some same-sex couples whose eligibility is still being reviewed by the Social Security Administration and the Justice Department. Um, for example, uh, legally married same-sex couples who now live in a state that doesn't recognize same-sex marriage, um, couples who uh, are joined in a civil union. Uh, while their eligibility is under review, they can file for benefits and if the uh, administration uh, concludes that they are eligible, they can get benefits back to the time they applied. Okay, when can you claim a benefit as a spouse? Uh, you can claim it as early as 62, uh, but you probably at this point won't be surprised to hear that your benefit will be reduced if you do that. The other requirement for claiming a benefit as a spouse is that if you were married, your spouse must have filed a claim for benefits. Um, he can do this by applying and uh, having the benefits suspended. Uh, that enables you to apply for benefits as a spouse while his benefit uh, continues to grow and he can claim it um, you know, later. Uh, but he must have claimed benefits. Exception to this, if you're divorced. They don't make you wait until your ex-spouse applies for benefits. But your ex-spouse has to be at least 62 and you have to have been divorced for at least two years. You can um, claim benefits uh, after your full retirement age, but there's no benefit to waiting to claim your spousal benefit after your full retirement age. Unlike your worker benefit, it won't get any bigger. So what happens if you claim your spouse benefit before your full retirement age? Next slide. Now, you may be thinking, wait, she just told me that. Why are we having this other slide? She explained that your spouse benefit is reduced um, if you claim it before a full retirement age. Well, something else happens if you claim a spouse benefit before your full retirement age. Your worker benefit also is subject to a reduction. Social Security uh, views you as having claimed both benefits, the spouse benefit and the worker benefit, and both are reduced permanently. Um, you'll get the higher of the two benefits, but both will be uh, smaller than if you waited. Next slide. The good news is that if you can wait until your full retirement age, you can choose which benefit uh, you want to receive first. For example, you could claim just your spouse benefit and let your worker benefit grow. And if your worker benefit is going to end up bigger than the benefit you get as a spouse, this can be a very good way of increasing your lifetime protection. And there's an example um, in the slide um, that you'll be able to look at later. It shows how someone who took a somewhat smaller spousal benefit at her full retirement age um, got that lower benefit for a few years, but then claimed her worker benefit and had a higher worker benefit for the rest of her life. Okay, now, what if you're widowed? When can you claim a retirement benefit as a surviving spouse? This one has an earlier age. 
You can claim a, a benefit as a surviving spouse as early as age 60. And if you're disabled, you can claim it as early as 50. But claiming it before your full retirement age reduces these benefits as well. The rule about it, does it pay to wait after your full retirement age to claim a benefit as a surviving spouse, there's no benefit to waiting after your full retirement age to claim these survivor benefits. In this respect, it's like the spouse benefit, but not like the worker benefit. Once you reach your full retirement age, you can claim the full benefit as a survivor. OK. Next slide. Um, you're going to hear me repeat what Virginia said, because we know from research that a lot of couples are unaware of this, that the benefits for a surviving spouse depend not only on when the survivor claims benefits, but on when the higher earner claims benefits. If the higher earner takes benefits before full retirement age, the survivor's benefit also will be reduced. The good news is, if the higher earner waits, the survivor's benefit will also be increased. So a higher earning spouse can provide more lifetime income protection uh, for a surviving spouse, as well as higher benefits for him or herself later in life by waiting to claim benefits. OK. So what if you're eligible for benefits as a surviving spouse and a worker? If you are widowed, you have an option that's not available to someone whose uh, spouse is, is alive. You, before your full retirement age, you get to pick whether you want to pick your benefit as a survivor or your benefit as a worker. Well, how do you go about making that decision? If what you're looking for is the most income protection later in life, maybe that's not your most important goal. Maybe you urgently need um, every penny you can possibly get to live on now. But if what you're looking for is lifetime income protection, what you want to do is find out which benefit will eventually be larger and claim the smaller one first. What do I mean? Suppose, what will your full survivor benefit at your full retirement age be? Will it be larger than your worker benefit at age 70? If, it's, if your survivor benefit is going to be bigger than your worker benefit, even if, you worked on, even if you waited until age 70 because your husband made a lot more money than you did, you can claim your worker benefit early um, and claim your survivor benefit at your full retirement age, and you'll have a higher, the highest possible benefit for life. If your worker benefit is going to be larger if you wait until 70 than your survivor benefit, um, because you and your husband had pretty similar earnings, even if his were a little higher to start, then you can take your survivor benefit first and let your worker benefit er earn uh, delayed retirement credits. Um, now, these examples and discussion assumes that you haven't claimed um, either benefit at the point you're widowed. If you're already receiving your Social Security benefits as a worker and are at or past your retirement age when you're widowed, which is very often the case, um, widowhood may happen when um, you're both past full retirement age, then the advice is easy. File for survivor's benefits immediately, because if you're past your full retirement age, um, waiting won't increase your benefits. So this is in the situation where people, someone like the example Anna, um, is widowed at 64, and she can choose which benefit she wants to start. OK. Next slide. Last wrinkle. Um, and. What happens if you are entitled to Social Security benefits, um, either because you spent some time working in uh, a job covered by Social Security, or your spouse uh, worked in a job covered by Social Security, and you're entitled to benefits as a spouse, but you also get a pension from work not covered by Social Security? Most common uh, situation where this occurs are people who worked in public sector jobs. Um, uh, teachers or state employees who weren't uh, covered by Social Security. And there are two special rules that can affect uh, your benefits. One, the windfall elimination uh, provision reduces the Social Security benefit of a worker 
who also receives a pension from a job that wasn't covered by Social Security and reduces benefits for that worker's spouse and surviving spouse. And the government pension off, uh, offset reduces spouse and widow's benefits for someone who is entitled to those benefits but also receives a pension from a job where they did not pay into Social Security. These rules are really complicated, very fact-specific, um, and uh, if you have a pension from public employment or expect to have one, uh, you can use calculators uh, for these uh, provisions at ssa.gov and figure out how they may affect you so you know what to expect from your Social Security benefits. Okay, just to wrap up, uh, maximizing lifetime income is especially important to women because of their longer average life expectancies and greater reliance on Social Security. If you can wait until after age 62 to claim benefits, you can increase your monthly income. Every year makes a difference. And particularly for women who are eligible for benefits as a spouse or widowed spouse, waiting until full retirement age can provide additional options. And finally, if you're married, make these decisions jointly. I'm going to repeat it again. A higher earning spouse can increase the benefit for a surviving spouse by waiting to claim benefits. There are some resources uh, that are available from NWLC, because I know this uh, can all be a little complicated, and you'll have the webinar slides to look at later. Um, and now I'm going to turn this over to Leticia uh, to hear more about um, why Social Security is important to Latinos. Thank you very much, Joan. Um, what I'd like to talk about is why this issue of delaying when you claim Social Security is important to Latinos. So by delaying when you claim Social Security, this can maximize your Social Security benefits. So this is important to Latinos because over half of Hispanics depend, of Hispanic seniors depend on Social Security for almost all of their income. This compares to about 36 percent of the entire senior population. So Hispanics are much more dependent on Social Security for, almost, for all of their income. In addition, about, Hispanics are about twice as likely as other seniors to live in poverty. So one in five Hispanic seniors live in, lives in poverty currently. And the average benefits received by Hispanic men and women um, who are seniors is quite low. It's lower than it is for other Americans. And that's in part because Hispanic workers earn less um, than other Americans. And so that's reflected then in their Social Security benefits. So the average benefits for a Hispanic um, man who's a senior are about 13295 And for Hispanic women, it's only 10500 so it, these are really low benefits presently, and that is in part because people are retiring at an early retirement age. So we can do what we can do more if we delay even one or two years um, to claim Social Security benefits. And one other thing to note about Hispanics is that Hispanics have a longer life expectancy than other Americans. For example, Hispanic women, the average life expectancy is age is 89. Um, for all women, the average life expectancy is 85. So Hispanic women live on average about four years longer than other women, than, well, than all American women. And this, it's a similar situation for Hispanic men. The average life expectancy for Hispanic men is 85, and it's 82 for all men, for all men in America. So that, that information is from the Social Security actuaries. So it's, pretty, it's a pretty legitimate source of information. Um, so by delaying the date that we claim Social Security benefits, Hispanic men and women would be increasing their Social Security benefits. And that, and that increase would last for their long life, which is, which is definitely very long. And just one other thing to mention, one of the reasons we de Hispanics depend on Social Security for almost all of their income more than many other groups is because Hispanic workers are less likely to have access to a private retirement plan at their workforce. So when people don't have a retirement plan at their workplace, 
then that means they're going to be depending on Social Security more for all of their income. So next slide, please. Um, I just wanted to let everybody know that we have more information specifically tailored for Hispanics, and we have these all in English and Spanish. And our latest brochure, which is just posting as of yesterday, is a, pr a primer on the benefits of delaying the date that you claim Social Security benefits. So, and this is specifically for Hispanics, and we have it in English and Spanish. And we have a lot of other brochures and videos and policy briefs all at nclr.org slash social security. And we also have an action network because we like to always be um, informing our followers about um, actions they can take to ensure that social security will be there in the future. Thank you. It, oh, I wanted to um, introduce Kyle, who will be speaking on um, his slides, which are starting now. Kyle, you may be on mute. Thank you so much. That's exactly what happened. I'm Kyle Williams, the Legislative Director for Financial and Housing Policy at the National Urban League. Washington Bureau. On behalf of our President and CEO, Mark Morial, and the Executive Director of the Washington Bureau, Chanel Hardy, I'd like to thank the National Academy of Social Insurance for having us here today. The National Urban League has been a staple in the community for over 100 years. Our mission is to ensure communities of color secure economic self-reliance, parity, power, and civil rights. To this end, we have 95 affiliates in over 300 communities nationwide who provide direct services to ensure our constituents are well informed and their needs adequately addressed. Next slide, please. Today, we will discuss the benefits of delaying retirement, including the need for Social Security, the advantages of the Social Security program, and why you should wait to receive your Social Security benefits. Next slide, please. It is estimated that 10,000 people will turn 65 every day of the year between 2010 and 2029. People are living longer, healthier lives. Since 1950, the average life expectancy has increased 11 years. According to AARP, your chief risk today comes not from dying too soon, but from living too long and running out of money. Next slide, please. Created in 1935 and still highly relevant today, Social Security was designed to ensure senior citizens don't die in poverty. It was also designed to help seniors retire more comfortably. Social Security is an important source of income for older African Americans. Nearly 75% nearly of African American beneficiaries rely on Social Security for at least one half of their income. And, and almost 50% rely on it for 90% or more of their income. The current poverty, poverty rate for older African Americans is 18%. However, it would be 53% without Social Security. Sadly, in 2013, Excuse me, sadly, in 2010, the average annual benefit for African Americans was only $13,617, totaling a little over $1,100 per month. You and I know it is nearly impossible to live comfortably on this income. This is not enough for adequate food, health care, or rent. Next slide, please. 80% of African American households do not have enough savings to last their expected lives, and only 32% have an employer-sponsored retirement plan. Next slide, please. According to the National Urban League's 2014 State of Black America Equality Index, African Americans have only 6% of the wealth of white Americans. 
six pennies for every dollar white Americans have. African Americans reached a 50% home ownership rate before the financial crisis. However, it is less than 45% now. African Americans are the only racial group whose home ownership rate continues to decline. This is particularly important because according to the Center for Global Policy Solutions, home equity accounts for 92% of African Americans' net wealth. Sadly, African Americans were more than three times as likely to be steered into subprime products and were 70% more likely to be foreclosed upon during the crisis as a result. Years of wealth were wiped away in a matter of months. A 2010 Aspen Institute report showed that the wealth gap between African Americans and whites quadrupled between 1984 and 2007. For this and a myriad of other reasons, African Americans need to do all they can to get the largest monthly Social Security payment possible. Next slide, please. You can receive Social Security benefits as early as age 62. However, your benefits will be reduced. The longer you wait to receive Social Security, the higher your monthly benefit payment will be. If you can wait until your full retirement age, which is 67 for most people, 40 and up, you will get a much higher monthly payment, which would add up to more over time. As you see in the second chart, if Martin takes Social Security at age 62, his benefits would be $750. However, if he waited until age 67, his payments would increase to $1,080, an increase of 30%. If he waits until 70, he would get paid even more. His monthly benefits would increase by 8% each year he waits to receive benefits between ages 67 and 70. As a result, if Martin waits until age 70, his monthly benefits would increase to $1,320. Social Security rewards patients. Next slide, please. This is especially important given the fact African Americans are living longer than ever but don't have enough wealth to retire. When should I retire is one of the most vexing decisions in your space. Waiting until age 70 may not be possible for you or many of your friends. However, waiting until age 67 or 68 may be. Next slide, please. If you are less than your full retirement age and you are still currently working, the best advice is to wait to receive Social Security. Let me repeat this again. If you are less than your full retirement age and you are still currently working, the best advice is to wait to receive Social Security. Next slide, please. You may be here longer than you think. This here is a picture of the oldest living married couple who are, who are celebrating 86 years of marriage this month. He is 104 years old and she is 101 years old. Again, people are living to be longer, or people are living longer, healthier lives. It's possible. Thanks so much. Next slide. Thank you, Kyle. Uh, my name is Kristen Arnold, and I am the Income Security Program Analyst here at the National Academy of Social Insurance. Um, and we will now be moving on to the question and answer section of our webinar. Um, thank you so much uh, to everyone who submitted questions to me via email and during the webinar. The first question um, is going to be for Virginia. Uh, if you decide to take social, if you decide to delay taking uh, your social security benefits, do you need to continue working to gain the increases associated with uh, waiting to claim? Virginia, you on mute? Uh, thank you, Kristen. Uh, the answer is, that's a very good question, and the answer is if you, uh, you do not need to be working after your full retirement age in order to have your benefits suspended, uh, but you, you can ask Social Security to, to uh, suspend your benefit for you. 
and, and in that way you would continue to earn delayed retirement credits um, until your benefit is reinstated or until uh, 70, where there's no reason to delay further. Okay, and a follow-up question to that that we received, um, is it necessary to contact your Social Security office to suspend benefits once you reach your full retirement age? That's an excellent question, and I, I'll be perfectly frank, I don't know for sure the answer, but the safe thing to do would be to contact your, the Social Security office and explain the situation to them and, and find out from them exactly what you need to do. Okay. Um, let's see. Moving on. Joan, this might be for you. Um, are your ex-spouse's benefits affected if you take a spousal benefit? Great question, and the answer is your ex-spouse's benefits are not affected. Um, if your ex-spouse has remarried, um, uh, the benefits for that spouse are not affected either. So this is not going to cause um, any controversy uh, uh, with your ex-spouse, and you don't need to deal with it uh, during the divorce. All you need to do is to uh, bring paperwork uh, showing the date of your marriage and divorce when you apply for Social Security, you don't have to anticipate any fights about this because it doesn't affect the benefits of the other of your ex-spouse or his family. Okay, um, and also a follow-up question for you: um, Does your ex-spouse have to have reached uh, their full retirement age for you to take a spousal benefit? No. Um, your ex-spouse doesn't have to have reached full retirement age, but does have to be at least 52 and eligible for benefits. Um, and also, uh, your ex-spouse, uh, uh, if, you're, if you're divorced, um, he doesn't actually have to have claimed benefits, but you have to have been divorced for at least two years. OK, thank you. Oh, let's see here. Um, I'll just open this one up to whoever wants to answer it. Um, it's about the cost of living adjustment. Um, and the benefits of delaying uh, include the cost of living adjustment in addition to the 8% increase per year um, for waiting to claim. Uh, does anyone want to elaborate on that? We've had a couple questions about the COLA. Hello, this is Virginia. I'll be happy to uh, answer that question. Um, the, when we talk about 8% per year increase, that is on top of whatever the cost of living adjustment is. So all of the adjustments based on age, the reductions for early retirement and the, delay, and the increases for late retirement are in addition to the, co uh, the cost of living adjustment. Good question. This is, this is Joan. Let me add to that a little bit. Um, because the cost of living adjustment is a percentage adjustment to the benefit you're getting, um, if you took your benefit early and instead of getting $1,000 a month, you're getting $800 a month, you get $800 a month plus, let's say inflation was 3% plus 3% of $800. If you waited until your full retirement age and got a benefit of $1,000 a month, it's $1,000 plus 3% of 1000 so that not only are you getting a higher basic benefit, the COLA adjustment, which is a percentage of your benefit, is higher as well. So that the fact that these benefits are inflation uh, adjusted means that there's even more benefit uh, to waiting than what we showed in that, in that chart. OK, great. Um, Leticia, would you like to talk a little bit about, and we've had some questions about uh, taking Social Security while you're working, and if that uh, is uh, possible, and um, any comments you have on that. Thank you. Yes, it is possible to work while you take your social, while taking Social Security benefits. However, when you do that, it has a big impact. For example, if you wait until after your full retirement age, there is no limit on how much you can earn, and, and, it, and it will not affect your Social Security benefits. So that's after, you know, currently age 66, um, age 67, and for many of us born after 1960. So again, waiting until after your full retirement age, it, you know, you can work as much as you want, and Social Security 
product is not, um, you know, will not will not give you any trouble for that. However, if you claim benefits early, for example, at age 62, then your Social Security benefits will be affected um, if you work very much. For example, if you're allowed to earn up to 15000 a year without it affecting your benefits. So you, you could earn 15000 and and nothing will happen to your Social Security benefits. But if you earn more than 15000 then they will reduce your Social Security benefits somewhat. So for every $2 that you earn over $15,000, social, your Social Security benefit would be reduced by $1. So there, there is a, a penalty then, again, if you retire early. But the point, though, is that if you do have a job and you can work, it's probably much better to delay the date that you begin claiming Social Security benefits. For example, if you delay, your Social Security benefit then will be higher for life. Whereas if you start collecting Social Security benefits and you're still working and you're only age 62, you know, you'll, you'll have such a lower benefit than if you had waited. And again, you're only going to be able to work for a period of time. Many of us, you know, our bodies wear out, things happen, and really there will come a time where you will not be able to work anymore. And at that point, you would be left with a much lower benefit um, because you had um, retired early or, you know, you had claimed your Social Security benefits early. So, again, it's much better if you have a job and you can work to um, wait until your full retirement age, at least, if you can, or delay even one or two years before you claim benefits. Thank you. Let let me just add a little bit to that um, because Leticia talked about um, how Social Security withholds part of your benefit if you're earning more than $15,000 a year. Um, and certainly I know a lot of people feel like uh, that's a penalty um, and because they're not getting their full benefit and, and that's how they feel about it. But you'll get that money back when you reach your full retirement age. So they don't take, that money isn't lost for good, they hold it until your full retirement age, but you are still going to reduce your benefit, um, you know, long term by the uh, percentages that Virginia showed. So um, there is uh, still a, you know, a good reason to wait um, until your full retirement age. If you're able to work and earn a, a decent amount of money, it's it's better to wait um, and uh, increase your Social Security benefit for the long term. But the money that they withhold, if you have extra earnings, that part uh, you will get back. Okay, thank you, Joan and Leticia. Um, we have a question about spousal benefits. Actually, a lot of questions about um, spousal and divorce benefits. Um, and I just want to reiterate that uh, there's a lot of information on the National Women's Law Center's uh, website and also in their slides um, about these issues because they are very complex. Um, but one question we have is, what are the pros and cons of taking a spousal benefit early? Well, if you're talk if by early the person is talking about uh, taking it before their full retirement age. Uh, then they are not only taking their spousal benefit early, they are also taking their worker benefit early, um, which means that both are reduced. And these days, a lot of women um, uh, have earned, or you know, if they waited a little longer to take their worker benefit, um, will earn a benefit on their own work history that is um, at least 50% or more of their husband's. Um, so that. Um, if they, if they file before full retirement age for a spousal benefit, Social Security is going to treat them as having applied for both, and they'll be getting a, a reduced benefit. Now, at some point, um, you know, if they are widowed, they'll get a higher benefit as a widow, but you know, they could uh, be living for many years on a lower benefit than they would get if they waited. Now, on the other hand, if you're eligible for a spousal benefit at your full retirement age, you can apply just for your spousal benefit, let your worker benefit grow, and that does make sense to do. So, you know, there's no, and there's no advantage to waiting past your full retirement age to claim just your spousal benefit. So, uh, 
like many things in this area, it's a, it's a little complicated, but uh, for when you're talking about spousal benefits, that full retirement age point is really important. Okay. Um, moving on to a slightly different topic, um, someone had emailed a question in before the webinar um, asking about um, Social Security and other sources of income, and somebody wanted to know, should they consider um, drawing down their 401k, for example, to postpone taking Social Security? And I just opened that up to the group. This is Virginia. I'd be glad to take a, a crack at, at answering that. There have been some economists and, and other financial advisors uh, who have explicitly uh, laid out strategies for doing this. I mean, uh, John Chauvin at uh, Stanford University is one of them, and uh, uh, he has, has done research that shows in today's uh, market environment, getting an 8% per year increase in your Social Security benefit is, is a very valuable investment, and you might be, do better to, uh, if you're out of work early, to uh, rely on your 401k funds if you have that kind of balance in your 401k funds and put off claiming Social Security to get the advantage of the delayed retirement credits. So some, some financial advisors and some economists who study this area are recommending that kind of strategy. Okay. Um, let's see here. Uh, we had a question come in um, wondering um, how benefits are affected if you take uh, Social Security before your full retirement age. So just maybe reiterate um, the impact of taking before your full retirement age and after. And this is Kyle here. Um, I'll take it. So Social, Social Security rewards its beneficiaries for being patient. So you're able to, to um, start receiving your benefits at age 62, but it won't be the full benefit. Um, you re you'll receive the full benefit once you reach your full retirement age, which is currently 66 years old, but it will be increasing to, six, to 67 very soon. In the slides that, um, that NASI prepared, in addition to um, our slides today, it kind of gives a, a view of, it, it shows that if you receive your, your retirement benefits at age 62, you will actually be receiving a reduced benefit of 25 percent. So 62, between 66, 67, and 62, you'll be receiving a reduced benefit of 25 percent. But if you wait again, um, then your monthly payment will increase. And if you wait beyond your full retirement age, then your monthly benefit will increase by 8 percent each year until at age 70. And in the charts that were prepared, um, the example we use is the difference will be between $750 and $1,320, which in the long run, which maybe in the short run doesn't seem like that much. Uh, I'm sure it does if you're on Social Security, but on paper it may not seem like that much. But in the long run, year over year after year, it adds up to be tens of thousands of dollars. And most experts, including NASI, and the, the National Women's Law Center, the National Council of La Raza, AARP, and a number of other experts um, encourage most people to wait to assess, to wait to receive their Social Security benefits. Thank you, Kyle. Um, and we have time for maybe one or two more questions. Um, we have a question concerning um, age. Uh, so if someone is past 70 years old, um, for example, 74, and they haven't yet taken Social Security, um, Joan, how would you respond to this individual? What should they do? Uh, well, they can, they can apply now. Um, and uh, Social Security will give them benefits retroactive for uh, six months, and assuming that they're eligible and just uh, you know fail to apply, um, they can get benefits going forward. 
um, and it's definitely worth doing. Uh, some other people who might be in the situation where they didn't apply when they um, first became eligible, maybe a, um, a, a spouse who was widowed um, didn't realize or was you know, just too upset to file for widow's benefits um, at that point. Um, and she's past her full retirement age. Um, uh, she didn't have to wait, but she did. She can file, and uh, if she's past her full retirement age, get six months' worth of uh, retroactive benefits. Um, so even if you've passed the age where your benefits are maximized and you realize that you haven't filed uh, but you're eligible, you can apply and um, get some retroactive benefits and get the income protection going forward. Social Security keeps its records for a very long time. So, um, you know, you, uh, they have information about your earning, earnings history, and it's um, worth going down and uh, making an application. And to do it as, as quickly, if, if you've already passed your maximum, you know, your full retirement age, to do it quickly, because um, that way you can get the most uh, out of it. OK, thank you. Um, I think I will turn it over to Amy. We've received a, a lot of great questions, but unfortunately, we've run out of time. Um, so I'll turn it over to Amy to do the closing. Great. Thanks so much, Kristen. And thanks, everyone, for joining us today and all of our fantastic speakers for all of their information. Um, when the webinar ends in a few seconds, you're going to see a survey that pops up. It should only take about a minute to complete. And it's very, very helpful for us about um, what information we need to go back over and what we need to put out there and um, how we can help best um, inform everybody about these issues. So please, I encourage you all to take a minute and fill out our survey and then enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks, everyone, again.